Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. Before I go any further on this, I am going to be cutting out the head because I'm when I mount it, um, this is just a little bit too big. So I think I'm gonna do it in, in at least three pieces. So one piece here, one piece here, and then this will be the third piece. So I'm just gonna use an X-Acto knife and cut it. I had to go over it a couple times with the blade just to cut through that alkali resistant fiberglass mesh. I'm going to be leaving this in place while I work, but I want to separate it right now. And there it is. I can lift it in one piece. The laticrete is just very, very strong. I'm not going to fool with it though, and I'm going to leave it right here for now. Today I am going to tackle the word St. Matthew that's on here. Now, when I created this, I used Adobe Illustrator. What you do is you draw a curved line and then you can add text to that line and it gives it just the right amount of curve. So uh, that's how I created those letters uh, with the right angles and whatnot. And I have already cut some black glass in strips that are the right thickness for uh, my blown up image that I'll be working on top of. And I will be adding some grays, um, a, a little bit of shadow in here, as well as the outline is not going to be just black and white. The letters will be black, but the outline, I will be adding some grays and some subtleties in there so it's not quite so stark. And let me get after it. I have just used my scoring and breaking tools to make some very thin strips with the gray, but it's not quite thin enough. And that's exactly, this is exactly the width that I like because then I can take it and simply snap it in half and I've got a nice thin strip to use for outlining. So glass likes to be cut in half, even though it's kind of long and thin, I can very easily cut it in half and then use it for the outline. That's it.
been having a little bit of trouble with my nippers. They are sometimes breaking the glass in weird ways that I can't control. And I think that means it's time for me to turn the wheels. So what I do each time is I mark it, mark where they've been, and then I turn both of the wheels down. And to do that, I just use this hex wrench. They come with the hex wrench, but replacement wheels are also available and the replacement wheels come with a hex wrench. I just loosen it. All right, so a lot of times it's really, really super stuck on there. So I put on an oven mitt just so I have uh, some better traction and it doesn't smash into my hand. So now I've gotten both of them loose and I turn them up, what, like an eighth of a turn? And then I tighten it. Careful, this one's gonna go back in the same spot it was in. And then same thing on this one. Turn it down just a bit so I've got a fresh blade area to work from. And then tighten it up. That's it. Cut that little circle there. Start with a, I don't know, rectangle. Cut the corners off. Cut those corners off. It's not looking very round. I'm going to round it. There we go. To cut the pieces on the S, I start with glass that is slightly wider than the width of the letters themselves. And I will be going around a curve here. So I'm going to cut it at an angle. And then I just place it on here and get this side a curve and then cut away on the edges of this side, depending on how tight it is. So at the top of this S, it's pretty tight. So this is a small piece with a fairly tight curve. And I check to make sure that it lines up. It does not, so I'm gonna nip that. There we go. If it's a little fat, I'll come back and skinny it up later. Something you probably can't see when this is sped up is that whenever I put a piece in like this one here, I will give it a tap or with my finger or with the tweezers to seat it so that it has good adhesion and I can make sure that it's in place properly. That's it. I'm on the final push with the sea anemone and all these tentacles.
these two mosaics are finished, the client that I'm making these for is going to be mounting them herself on an exterior wall. And I'm gonna be shipping them on this mesh, so I'm not going to cut around them. She can cut around them because I'm going to be using the mesh to keep them in place uh, during shipping. But I'm gonna cut them apart right now. And peel them up from the base. So I just have them taped onto this wood. I'm not sending the wood to her, so. Now, it doesn't stick to my design because if you've watched my other video, you understand that I have put a piece of plastic clear shelf paper in between the design and the mesh. All right, so this is what I'll be sending. You can see how strong that thin set is, but it's still pretty fragile. I don't want to mess around with it. And I'll be taping it, like I said, to a base to ship. Here's the other one. There's a couple different ways you can do this. And I have tried to place a bed of thin set that is the depth required to hold the pieces permanently so that I, it, another way you can do it is to just barely put each one on and then the, the uh, mesh is much, much more flexible. But flexibility really wasn't that important here. The important thing uh, was making this a little bit more solid so that it's easier to install. So when she uses a notch trowel, she can use the notch trowel on the back of this to adhere it to the wall. And it's just a, an easy way to work. You guys, look how strong this thin set is. It is just amazing. I highly recommend Laticrete 254 Platinum. If you're going to be using thin set, it's just worth it. I've tried other thin sets, I've had issues. And look at this also, it's so sparkly. <laughs> Let me show you the fish as well. There it is. Pretty great. There they are together. I think it's gonna look great on her wall. I'm not sure what else she has planned. I hope she sends me pictures of it finished. When I was cleaning up the scrap glass from this project, I ended up, it was just so, so pretty sitting here, these these hot colors. I ended up pulling the reds uh, so that maybe I can use these on my sunflower. And then I bagged up some of the bigger pieces and, and this is sort of the crumbs that are left. I'll be throwing away. But look how pretty. I can't. I couldn't, I, I couldn't resist. I have these three sunflower projects and this, these red petals were what I had in mind. So my boss said that because I finished up that sea anemone and I still have time this week, that I could work on this for a little bit. So let me get out. Then a feather cut. So I have this bag of translucent feather cut glass that I used to make a lantern. Let me show you the lantern because I still happen to have it. Here it is. I'll hold it up to the light. Voila, I never grouted it because I like how the edges of the glass sparkle on there. But anyway, I've got some deep reds that I can use from leftover from this lantern that I can put uh, on my sunflower. And look how dark that red is. That's kind of like this really dark part on the petals. And then on the edges, I've got some more glass I can cut up if I need to, but I've got this uh, brighter red, and then I also have one that, that is a bit dark that's not translucent that I'll use, and I'll kind of just mix them all up. Some of the glass that's shards that I've pulled that are translucent, and they are all red. One reason I use a white plate is that I can see what it will look like when I put it on my base, which is also white. So some of these I'm eliminating right, but they're just too dark. They look black uh, without light shining through. So I'm going to pull a bunch of these. These are ones that I maybe can use that are a little bit more on the red side. And these are just too dark. But now when I hold it up to the light, look how red it is. So I think it's best used as a glass on glass type situation where you can see through and you can see that beautiful red color. Um, but on the other hand, I'm going to use some of these in my sunflower. To cut feather cuts, I just start with a regular piece of glass and I put the nippers at an angle. 
then where this fattest part is, I kind of go across from that and cut that at an angle all the way up the glass. And then I can do it again and again using that same. I can come back down. If the pieces start to get too long, too funny, too sharp, I always go back and fix them. So I think this is too sharp. I don't like those bits, so I'll cut them off. And I think I'm also going to cut it in half, but I'm gonna cut it in half at an angle here. So I've got two feather cuts, that's too sharp. Sometimes if they get a funny little ledge on them, I'll, I'll nip that corner. Those are some decent pieces. This one's too sharp. Let's nip those edge of ends off. on this one so that's where I'm going to stop and I can't wait to add some of that background because it really looks lonely without the leaves that's putting it together thanks for watching see you next time